Welcome everybody back to the Whiskey House Pub House. I'm joined here today by Zach and Dylan. Hello. Yo, yo. And uh, I think we have an interesting topic for ourselves today. We actually met someone, like talked to them. Yeah. Well, I, me and I, Dylan I did. did. I did. <laughs> I did. <laughs> it's okay. Let's get into it. Yeah, let's Intro get into now. it. Intro now. And then... Bum, 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 bum. Now we're back from the intro. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, uh, so how you, how you guys been? It's been a little bit since we had Carter. Two episodes it'll be. Um, yeah. And uh, you missed out. Zach and I had a uh, liquor boy on. We interviewed him a little bit. We did American Single Malt. Talked a little bit about that. And then we did our um, um, Wild oh. Turkey summarization history thing. You heard that, thing. didn't you? Oh yeah. That nice was, and loud. It picks up everything but uh yeah so we talked about history wild turkey tried some stuff like father and son 13 the diamonds Mm -hmm. a master's keep pretty glorious yeah that's good stuff but um we had pappy wink 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 i'll just nudge pappy i that's a perfect set guess what i had uh last week yeah we know was it everybody not pappy it was it was was it was, it was pappy 20 Ooh, 20. I yeah. tried Pappy 20. $80 uh, an ounce. That's rough. Um, definitely a pass now. <laughs> but Not for, worth it. But it was, it was worth the experience. What if it was $1? Was it, would it be worth oh, it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just joking. If it was Evan Williams. <laughs> if, if Zach was offered... What, here's my question, Zach. Mm. If you were offered um, for the price of a dollar, you mm. would get an ounce, but... The catch is it's Evan Williams bottle and bond. Yeah, I just. What would you do? I would just pass. Would you pass? Um, nah, no. I mean, I if I had, that. if it was like you need to drink a whiskey. No, no, no. You, you know, don't. Like, you don't have to. It's, oh yeah. It's this it's, is the dollar. This is the value. It's voluntary. Yep. This is like the Friday night well water or well yeah. bourbon deal. Yeah. A buck. Now it's it's Evan Williams VIB. No, I'll spend more money. Depends on if I can put it in a drink or not. You can chase it with a beer, but the beer is only half off. Uh, what kind of beer? <laughs> anything. I, I don't usually chase bourbon with beer. They have they have but... to pull they have to pour it neat. That's Dang, the catch. I was hoping I could put it in like a Manhattan well, or something mm-hmm. like that. You you can have it with whatever, but you have to have it neat. So you can you can use it as a chaser or whatever, or you could have a cocktail next to it. But the Evan Williams is neat. Actually, okay, I. I got it. I got mm-hmm. it. If you're going to do that, you got to do big pint of Guinness mm-hmm. and then have beer in a bump. That'd be fine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Chaser. Yeah. The chaser. That's what I was getting I kinda, to. I kind of wonder like if you, if anyone's ever experimented with spiking beer, you know, like instead, well, instead of boiler, chasing it. Isn't that a boiler maker? Yeah. It's either a boiler maker or a, um Irish car bomb. It's kind of Well, the then Irish car bomb is that with also baileys, baileys yeah, yeah i wasn't i wasn't thinking like cream cocktail or cocktail in general i just mean like you're putting a little bit of whiskey, whiskey in, in beer i, 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 I might be yes, wrong as a cocktail yeah but i feel like that sounds kind of i weird. think that's a boiler mm-hmm. maker but i might be wrong on that but anyways because it, it does sound like it could be good in like a dark stout or oh for a, a sure really a, dark a guinness ale. and yeah. a jameson yeah slabs well that's that's not too far derived from like a black and tan either oh. that's two beers but that's like that's the a same. guinness it's and a, a, a an, an irish and, ale it yeah. could be any Irish ale. It's like a Guinness and a Smittix that you yeah. s- put together. I had yeah. Harp for the first time. I didn't know that was a it was a lager by Guinness. Guinness. Mm-hmm. What did, it was good. Uh, did Brooklyn put you onto that? Well, he just he told me about it and I tried it. Yeah, but still not as good as regular Guinness on tap. Guinness on tap is just amazing. No, Guinness on tap is well. The thing is, you have to find a good Guinness on tap because some Guinnesses they don't taste the same. Hmm. They don't clean the lines, or they don't. No, like, it's like specifically how Guinness is made when it's, like it's shipped. Mug. Mm. Um, it like once it gets exposed, like once it's exposed to air, it gets like kind of weird, like right. tinny taste to it. Kind of tastes yeah. like nickels. Yeah. And I guess like in <laughs> my dad's gonna taste like pennies. <laughs> in um, 
Ireland when it's made, it's like it's, it's just ridiculous. I guess right. like when yeah. it's quick transport, never yeah. rarely gets exposed to the air, and when it does, it's, it's right on the tap, and it probably gets drank thought, faster there too. <laughs> I thought there was a bre- they had a brewery in the U.S. for the U.S. market. No, I think it all gets shipped. Okay, from the U.K. Okay, cool. Well, that was a sidetrack. That was a good. One. Um, so no, that's what I'm I did. Saying, I'm gonna say no. Dollar, I'm passing. Dollar Evan Williams. All right, all right. bottle and bond. If or, I can chase it with a Guinness, more. yes. I'm paying more okay. for something else. Okay. But the Guinness has to be like six bucks. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, that's high for a Guinness. I think. No, well, no, that's amazing. That's all pretty right. cheap for a Guinness. All right, but so I had that. I had Pappy twenty. Um, I also had George T. Stag uh, twenty. Uh, twenty twenty. Nice. Um, that two ounces. I got two ounces of that. That nice. was fantastic. Yep. And I had this year's Old Forester birthday bourbon, which Ooh, was really good. Nice. Where did you get this at? Uh, Brick and Bourbon in Maple Grove. Nice. It's pretty good. My coworker, he lives in Maple Grove, and he he just recently moved back to Maple Grove. He had moved away to Buffalo. He's from Maple Grove, moved away, moved back. He he loves he loves the Grove as he calls it. Right? They call it. <laughs> it's he coins it the Grove because it has everything. It really does. Like. If, if we're talking best suburbs of Minneapolis, mm-hmm. like the, like in the corners, you know, you got Eden Prairie on one, you got Woodbury on the east, you got Egan on the bottom right, you know, and then you got Anoka on the top. Maple Grove, Maple Grove. is the best of them all. <laughs> it just it has. It's like it's a consolidated little city. Yep, because it's and it's also on the way to St. Cloud, so you got True. you got the St. Cloud little thing going on. You got Minneapolis in the middle. The Maple Grove, Grove is where you want to be. Welcome to the Grove. <laughs> Welcome to the Grove. Maybe rent isn't wouldn't be expensive there. <laughs> I wish. So no, what, it is. What what do, where you've been up to, Zach? I have not been up to a whole lot. All I did whiskey related was I purchased uh, the most recent um, Nick Offerman edition of Lagavulin. I have three of them. Right yeah. Nice. yeah, I have a problem. I, well, I mean, it's it's actually pretty good. I no, opened it's it really up. Good. It's called it's, stocking. Yeah, it's called preparing. Preparing. For the worst, it's yeah. yeah, it's very much, it's it's kind of like a flat, a muted log sixteen, mainly because it does lack the age, but it really it's it's kind of like on that path, it's on the progression to becoming a log sixteen, mm-hmm. and it was cheap, it was like seventy bucks, you know, so that's it, the best part. Getting of it, a yeah. getting a baby log for seventy because because tastes a lot better than log eight because log eight is gross and yeah. that's also seventy bucks. Where'd you buy it? Uh, Eden Prairie Liquor. <laughs> oh, good to know. Wait, Eden Prairie Liquor is across from the Cub. Uh, no, how are the they selling buy. it for seventy bucks? I bought mine for like you eighty five for yeah. there. No, it's, I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> it was seventy bucks. I'm confused because I literally just was there yeah. and I bought the same exact bottle at Eden Prairie Liquor. At Eden Prairie Liquor for eighty five dollars. Yep. I'll go. I mean, the bag might still be in my car, and I'll go look. I think I spent ninety dollars on that bottle. Actually, not after tax. Let me, let me. I use a credit card. Well, let's keep talking. And I'll pull up the transaction. The only reason <laughs> I know that is because the right after, yep, we drove to Liquor Boy, and I bought another bottle. Yep, <laughs> because the my dad yep. was saying that it was sixty nine dollars at Liquor Boy, mm. and I didn't believe him, and but you were proven wrong, and I was proven mm-hmm. wrong. Yep. And I was like, okay, well, we have a little bit of time to go to Liquor Boy. I didn't even want to go. I was forced to go. <laughs> I literally didn't. I did not want to go. And they forced me to go to Liquor Boy. And there it was sitting on the shelf for $69. And I was pissed. Yeah. So yeah, it, was, <laughs> it wasn't quite 70 In total, I paid $83. So after tax, what's that? Hmm. Tax is like 7.7 7 or something. Yeah, no? it's like... So 83 times... Point, it's essentially 8%. Point yeah. eight or point nine two, seventy six. 72. $76. Paid $76. Wow, they must have dropped the price like immediately. Literally after I bought it. Yep. Because it was like 85 or something when I bought it there. I remember spending like 90 bucks. The other thing I found, since we're talking about Liquor Boy, I, I got uh, a C922. Mm-hmm. I think I told Zach a little bit about it. Actually, um, compared to the recent ones, this is my favorite going back all the way, possibly the. B520 or even the C919. Um, you know, going back to Elijah Craig video, I think we both, it was kind of a split between the B520 and the C919. I think Zach liked the 20 a little bit more, but I think you and I favored the C9. I think that's right. I don't remember exactly. But it was good. I mean, it had a lot more character than ones of recent, given I hadn't gotten all of them, but yeah. 
hadn't been super happy with it, and especially since the price just seems to be going up. But I got it for eighty bucks, so it's very nice. Yeah, yeah. cool. Well, so what? What? Uh, this will get into the whiskey that we have before us today. Um, you and I went to a special event at a Spirits on Friday between yes. the timing of three thirty and five o'clock. Yes, sir. <laughs> Uh, Central time. Central, Central time. time. That's yeah. what I was looking for. I'm like, not Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> Definitely Central Time. Yeah, Central Time. And um, those of you who are familiar with the Kentucky Owl brand might be familiar with the Master Blender, former Master Blender, Dixon Denman. And what we have before us is Dixon Denman's newest project. It is the Twice Oak Whiskey, I believe, company. <laughs> uh, no. I might have to look that. No, it's... I should uh, know. Produced and bottled by the Prestige Beverage Company. Well, that's the distribution. Yeah. Produced and bottled. <laughs> Produced. Uh, I, don't, I don't know where he got it. Yeah, the 2XO brand i believe so it's twice oak oh yeah that's what it's called is the twice that's oaked. what i said yep. <laughs> it but, literally says it on the top of the bottom. yeah mm-hmm. so um you know about a year and a half ago he left kentucky owl um multiple theories on why mostly uh it seems like kentucky owl is looking for more of a bigger distribution and we did see that with um Wise Men. Wise Men's Bourbon. Yeah. And also the St. Patrick's Day uh, release and of the Wise Men's Rye. Kentucky Owl. And also there's a special Japanese blend edition of Kentucky Owl. It's a red bottle. I've never even seen that. But so essentially they came out with a lot more stuff after he left. Um, and it seems like he was kind of getting annoyed. Yeah, you don't want that commercialization. Well, and it's not, you can't sustain um, a specific flavor profile if you're number one looking for, let's release as many bottles as we can. Yeah. Um, and that definitely seems like that was more, that was his motivation was more so the product before total numbers of units. Which I agree with. Yeah. And we've, you know, we've been fans of the Kentucky Owl Rise Batch 3 and 4. Mm-hmm. And um, I did not bring it, but we will have it soon. Um the Kentucky Owl Batch 10. Um, I think we'll compare that to the Batch 11. And that was Dixon's last. That was Dixon's last um, blend. Blend. Yep, correct. So, yeah, we, so we, what did we do? We went to Ace Spirits um, this past Friday mm-hmm. for a special release of their first edition of the Phoenix blend. Of the 2XO. 2XO. We got a little sample of it, and we, he also was there for bottle signing. So I think what we'll do is we'll read through the press release info and then kind of give some uh, thoughts on it. Sounds good. I ain't got the press release. We got the press release. I, I got it. I gave it to Zach so he knows when I, when I mess mm-hmm. up. <laughs> um, so the Dixon Denman, uh, renowned American whiskey blender, announced his next chapter in the launch of twice-oaked uh, Kentucky Straight bourbon whiskey. Denman to bring unique sought after whiskey blends to spirit enthusiasts everywhere thought his award-winning craft blending practice. Uh, the Dixon, Dixon Edmund, one of the most prophetic American whiskey blenders. <laughs> he's, he's a prophet. <gasps> that, that's, how he, that's, that's, how, that's why he's so good at blending because he knows how it's going to taste he before knows. he combines it. Zach, would you k- take this away, please? <laughs> you know, the funny thing is that literally there was a guy that asked a question about that mm-hmm. at the at the tasting, and he was like, yeah, I got no idea what this is going to taste like until it's done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It is a gift, though. He does have a, it gift. a gift. It's a really good. It's prophetic, even. Yeah. Do you want me to? I could. Yeah, no, no, Oh, please. for real? Oh, okay, yeah. no. I, I, I thought you were joking. All right. Yeah, Dixon Dedman, one of the most prolific American whiskey blenders in the industry, known for his award-winning, high-proof, robust bourbon and rye blends, announces his highly anticipated next creation, Twice Oaked, 2XO, Kentucky Stray Bourbon Whiskey. Oh, sorry, no, it's not Twice Oaked, it's Two Times Oak. Yeah, Two that's, Times that's Oak. That's what it is, Two Times Oak. Uses a unique blending practice where Dixon re-barrels his hand-selected aged whiskey into new charred oak barrels for intense wood notes 
and extraordinarily rich, complex flavors. Mm. Two Times Oak, the Two Times Oak brand, will consist of a series of small batch blends and a series of single barrel releases. Each small batch blend will be different, bearing a distinctive name and symbol inspired by Deadman's passion to innovate, collaborate, and create high quality liquids with unique characteristics and profiles. The first small blat- small batch <laughs> small batch blend in the Two Times Oak series, the Phoenix Blend, will be released in November of this year in select markets and at limited quantities. The Phoenix Blend will be followed by two new small batch blend releases and single barrel releases in each consecutive year. So that's two each. So two smalls and two single barrels, or one of each. Two new small batch. Um. It kind of sounds like it's supposed to be two of both. Well, so four yeah. total releases. We'll talk anyway, about it. We'll, yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll yep. just finish. Two times old Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey will be brought to market through Prestige Beverage Group, an industry-leading importer and brand innovator of award-winning wines and spirits. Together, Dixon Deadman and Prestige Beverage Group aim to offer the most unique sought-after whiskey blends to spirit enthusiasts everywhere. Launching Two Times Oak is a dream come true. I had a vision to create something new in American whiskey backed by the liquid in the bottle synonymous with quality and the anticipation of the next blend, commented Deadman. I knew I needed to find the right fit, and I could not have found a better partner in Prestige Beverage Group to work alongside and turn this dream into reality. They are passionate about whiskey and focused on accomplishing our shared goals. The Phoenix Blend is the first release, and it's just the beginning. We are so excited to be a part of bringing Dixon Deadman's next creation to market. A limited edition small batch offerings will showcase Dixon's unique approach to blending, added Mike Morgan, president of Prestige Beverage Group. Do you want to do the about? Of Let's Dixon do Deadman? the about and then just we'll stop after that. Sure. So about. guys, this is this is dead Dixon men. Dixon dead men. Dead Dixon. Dix Dix man dead on. <laughs> Dixon Deadman is a 40-year-old master blender who has quickly established himself as one of the most prolific American whiskey blend. This is just the rehash of the beginning. He grew up on the Kentucky Whiskey Trail, infusing the learnings from industry legends with his culinary expertise from running his James Beard award-winning Beaumont Inn, which has been in his family for over a century. Dixon is best known for his high-proof, robust Kentucky Owl Straight Bourbon and Rye whiskey blends, a brand he relaunched in 2014 from his great-great-grandfather, C.M. Deadman, after it went dark in 1916, around the time of Prohibition. His blends have garnered awards and recognition, earning their place among the finest American whiskeys in recent memory. He has been featured in the New York Times, Forbes, Rob Report, Playboy, hey. <laughs> Garden and Gun Magazine, <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> The Whiskey Advocate, and more. For more information about the Two Times Oak brand, please visit 2xowhiskey.com. <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> Hit us with that cork pop of the bottle. Yeah. Bonk. Yeah, it's hard to do to say the URL as the name of the company because it's not it doesn't work that way. Then no. If you say two times oak dot com, it doesn't. That's not what it is. It's tough. Get that glub. Yeah. Ooh. Go. And no need to give me a whole lot. I'm gonna give you all of it. All of it. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Perfect. I I have been told that this is supposed to taste viscous, viscous. and intense, despite its proof. I won't tell you which one of these people said that, but it's I am in the room with them. Who could it be? Definitely wasn't me. I love this because it smells like pickles. <laughs> I love the vinegariness. It does kind of have a vinegariness to uh, it. It's a check it? for Zach liking pickles. <laughs> pickles. Pickles. <laughs> so um, this is 52% alcohol. Yes, mm-hmm. it is. Non-age dated, so it's at least four years. But It's a secret to everybody. I mean, the first... The fact this is the first of the batch lines us up to be pretty spectacular, one would think. Mm-hmm. But on the nose, it's a... Uh, I've always said I'm not one that has ever been able to pick up a lot on the nose on a bourbon, but... But we still try. 
it does have brown sugar, you know, oakiness, vanilla, this standard, typical, nice notes you want to expect. It's kind of orangey. I, I get the citrus, more citrus and vinegar than I do the dark sugary okay. fruits. I think I was looking at it. So this is the same um, producer or distributor or company that does um, Indigo Gin, which is a Snoop Dogg brand, I believe. Nice. Or Indago. Yeah. yeah, what's the, um, this is just the, uh, what's the Scottish, the Scotch producer, Diag- Diagno? Diag- Diagio? Diagio. Di- yeah, Diagio. Diagio. This is Diagio of bourbon. And I, I, not even just bourbon, just American spirits. Diego. I told my the same coworker that lives in the Grove. The Grove. Um, I told him that about Johnny Walker and how they don't they don't make whiskey. They blend whiskey. They blend That's whiskey. all they do. Mm-hmm. They're the you know most prolific blenders in the world. And, and they're like, like Johnny what? Walker doesn't make whiskey. I'm no. like, nope, not at all. And then it just it when it, the reason I bring this up is because he's like, so you're saying that like I could make whiskey? No. I'm like, well. Yes, you could just blend it. Yeah. You could blend other people's whiskey. You could do MGP. Oh well, yeah. For stuff, you know, he's like, do people do that? I'm like, yeah. yeah, a lot of people do that. Let me open your eyes. And then he's just like, oh wow. He's like, if I drank whiskey, that would be. I'd love to do that. And I think, it, I think all I'm saying is that w- blending is something that we should do more often because it's fun. It is fun. And I haven't tasted this yet, but I think this could be an example of how good blending can be. You don't even got to make it yourself, guys. <laughs> you don't even got to make it yourself. <sighs> I'm going to get into it. I like it. All right. I thought that was Zach doing that. That tastes way hotter than that 52. Oh, yeah. When you were doing that snorting sound, it sounded just like... Oh. Uh, uh, Kung Fu Panda when he was eating the cookies. Um, don't have to, but this is new water. If you guys want, I'm going to put some water in it because I wasn't able to do so at the store. Mm-hmm. And that was one thing I was curious about. So if you choose so, you can use this new water that I just opened. I'll take you up on that. Here, I'll just give you the bottle. Um. I still, I'm sticking to my guns. It's still viscosity, viscosity for me. The body is one of the highlights that I have for it. It's, it is, it's spicy, but careful, SpongeBob. Cinnamony and like brown sugar, and uh, I just really like it. The finish sticks with you and just goes forever, That's and really it continues good. with that syrupy finish. There's like a little bit of cherry, even vanilla. That was without water for me. Mm-hmm. Oh, you pay- Oops. Oops. You played a dangerous game and you lost. <laughs> I lost big time. That was a lot. Nah, that's Free a lot hand of- on the water. It's a lot of water and a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> it does no, bring is, up. I think this is really good. Oh, uh, yeah. It the- tastes like water. <laughs> poor pass. I, 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 my sentiment is almost identical to Dylan's. Just yeah, the, It's kind of traditional tasting, I guess. I was I was hoping that because of the vinegary scent, it would kind of have that like a grassy vibe to it. I don't get a whole lot of you know grass. It's floral not really flavors, grassy, y'all. But it's, it's not. Um, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with not tasting grassy. I want just, dirt in my I'm mouth. I'm just saying it smelled. It's <laughs> <laughs> the the, the, the whiskeys that smell like that usually have are usually rye or high rye, um, and so and high ryes usually have that nice pepperiness that this one. Sweeter than you think, mm-hmm. than you think it would be. Have you had it with the water yet? I know. I'm okay. gonna know. Um, I should say that the uh, SR, SRP on this is a hundred dollars. SRP. SRP. Yes. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that, that's that works because it's just a suggested retail price, not by the manufacturer. It's just suggested. That's what that <laughs> means. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm dumb. No. I mean, honestly, you'd, you'd be forgiven. Cause, I like, might have made that up. I'm not sure. No, manufacturers. Oh, yeah, that's okay. what it stands for. Yeah, yeah. Well, because knew. it's like their tech. This technically hasn't been released yet, right? So, whatever they're selling it for mm-hmm. is most likely what it's going to be sold for. Well, but... I, 
So meeting in the Minnesota market, technically this doesn't release. There is going to be – actually, I should look tomorrow. It reminds me. Um, it's October 31st today. But tomorrow technically would be the first day it releases. There is going to be some distribution online through – Through his website? Well, th- just um, through um, a online distributor. Oh, okay. So I'm going to see if that is a plausible route for – Myself to get a second bottle of this. Um, It'd be nice if it was a little cheaper, but I doubt that's going to happen. But you know what? That was our main concern about Kentucky Owls. This is expensive. This is cheaper. I mean, this is significantly, significantly cheaper. cheaper. Mm-hmm. Um, and $100 by no means is cheap. No. However, I think at the point of which this flavor profile is and the quality, I'm happy that it is a hundred dollars. That seems like a fair linear yeah. scaling of price, you know, like, and well, actually that's, it's, it's better. It's actually, this is not half as good as Kentucky owl. I think it's better. It's better than half as good. You know, I guess I couldn't put an exact number on it, but it's been a long time since we've had Kentucky yeah, owl. This kind of reminds me of different distiller, but, um, if you guys have the, the whistle pig piggyback, the cheap one, I have not, it's actually kind of tastes like that. It tastes like a, a stronger version of the piggyback. Which me. is interesting because it's a rye. Yeah, right, exactly. But the piggyback has this like strong, sharp brown sugar flavor. Mm. Um, and this also has a, identical yeah. of that. Um, but the piggyback is not as high proof. That one's only, I believe it's like 42%, like mm-hmm. 84%. Um, but it, it, if that was just a little bit hotter, I think they taste actually quite similar. This with the water... Um it smooths out the harsh edges, yeah, um, like the the spice or the cinnamon yeah, and but stuff. I didn't think but it added anything. No, I don't think it did. I think I think it just made it um, less spiky. Yeah, mm-hmm. neither better nor worse. But I can I, take I, it. I like it. it. Yeah, by adding water, it tastes more like water. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Crazy! Wow. What did it? Oh man, yeah. I can. I do like that. But live yeah. it. Uh Thanks, Dead Dicks on Men. Yes, yeah, so we, we went there. We went to Ace Spirits, got a bottle, sold out in like 40, 45 minutes. Yeah, there's... There was, Super they had, quick. They had six cases. And yeah, by the time we left, it was it was gone. Well, and you, you were telling me that um, essentially it sounded like that the owner of Ace contacted Dixon because he heard that he was possibly coming to the state promoting the brand. Not 100% sure on That's that. But. Right. But... Um, Anyway, they got in contact and came in there for a bottle signing, and yep. it sounded like um, Ace got a few more cases than other stores. It sounded, sounded like, like they moved some allocation around. Yeah. So, but I'm I'm definitely curious to see how many bottles were released, and not just to Minnesota, but how many there are going to be mm-hmm. for the Phoenix Blend. Um, but it was a cool event. Signed it. Talked to him a little bit. I uh, got to mention, you know, I asked him. Uh, if they ever found the goats from the Beaumont Inn, which is a reference to the podcast, a great podcast, um, which he has frequented multiple times. And he had said that apparently they recorded a episode in Chicago with a bunch of goat references and <laughs> talking about that. But, um, and they just mentioned like, you know, enjoying the episodes frequently that he had been on and uh, the, the, the rye Blend and, yeah. three and batch batch four and uh, the bourbon, um, and so it was kind of cool. But that was we pretty got much it. Shake his hand. Yeah, we did. Have you washed it yet? I haven't. I have a lot. <laughs> um, so what are we thinking about this as far as like a, a rating? Uh, I would have to give it. I'd give it a seven. Do you want me to scale 3. it with the price or just? subjective just do it how you normally yeah, do it I normally do it yeah, yeah normally i just i'd say this is like this is seven low seven so like almost seven and a half but not quite like seven of course it's a seven because it it really just doesn't have a whole lot of the rounded flavors i like because mm. adding the water didn't it rounds the flavors but it doesn't make anything better mm-hmm. and it was it was i mean it's great this is great and i i just there's a couple more things i wish is what i had i wish it was more peppery I wish it had a little more grassy floral flavor. It smells really good. I love the smell. So that's why I give it most of the points. Um, if this was like, since this is a brand new brand 
And this this bottle is kind of this is a cool bottle to spend a hundred bucks on because if you're at the signing event, it's the first one you got to meet him, and so this means a lot. <clears throat> if this was like the third release, Meh. it 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 just wouldn't be as like cool swept in a rug. Yeah. You know? I would still rate it the same, but I would be like, whoa, like, I just don't, this just does not hold any sentiment to me. And I can agree with that. So I'd say this is don't, don't drink this. Like it's not, don't drink it. Like it's sentimental because mm-hmm. it isn't. This bottle's going down. This bottle's going down. Going down, down. down. Yeah. But, but keep, keep the glass Should bottle it? with the signature. Cause that's cool. That's, oh, the, yeah. that's, that's the sentiment was the memory. Yeah. The it, juice on the yeah. inside is, Maybe Good. I should just dump it out into something else <laughs> and then just keep the bottle. <laughs> oh my god, he's doing it! <laughs> into my stop, mouth. Stop! Stop! Into my mouth. <laughs> um, are you going to make it into a lamp or a candle? I don't know how I would make it into either of those. Well, I guess I could. <laughs> well, just without without messing up the signature. Oh, does he have it on like the It's kind of like curve? it's kind of like right on the net. You could do a lamp the then. I could just I've seen lamps go down through the neck and then because they the you just take the cork off and then they drill like the bottom of it and then that's a thick bottom though that's terrifying. Well, just like in the middle, in the, like the, and then it's secured to a base. Yeah, but either way, yeah. Like, but so, sweet, yeah. This reminds me of like I, I'm gonna compare it to like the barrel line of products, right? Because those are also blended MPG or MGP, right? No, no, those no. Are MGP? Some of the they're not necessarily MGP. Well, okay. they're barrel picks yeah. from other people that they brand. Oh, there right. has been okay. MGP. Ones. There has been, okay. but they're I not. See. I see. Not always. Never mind then, because they're not. I'm not sure which ones are and which ones aren't, so I wouldn't compare it then. We've only I've only had one on the podcast uh, from that you had picked up, which was. It was all a pick from Dickel, it was like a nine year. That's right. Yeah, it was the. That's Dickel the only one I've had. I've okay. picked up from Ten Ten. Yeah, which was. It was okay. It was fine. Not for a hundred dollars. Yeah, I get, and that's yeah. the other thing is like four hundred, hundred dollars for, for yeah, this. I'd rather spend it on. We're, I mean, we're talking now a lot of the barrel proof Elijah Craig's. We're talking, yeah. I mean, um, barrel products. We're talking. A lot of limited editions, like the yellow. I just picked up a Yellowstone, a 2022 limited edition. That was 120 dollars. Mm-hmm. It was good. Um, a lot of people have been rating it in the mid sevens too. You know, not that exactly. That's how you're rating the same, but I would put this above quite a few things that are in the category as that far as price. A, yeah, the the price definitely is a higher than. A good portion of the the that price point. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm myself. I'm imp- impressed with it as far as. So I feel like if I I do feel like if this was a Kentucky Owl product, we would be looking at a two hundred dollar bottle, or more. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm not sure what I'm <laughs> trying to say as far as. The pricing on that, I'm happy it's a hundred dollars, but I do think that if it was a Kentucky Owl product, it, we would be looking at something way more expensive. Even the uh, Kentucky Owl Confiscated, which we had not had, that started at eighty bucks when it came out. I saw it at Total Wine Friday for a hundred and forty dollars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's good, but it's not like that good. How does it justify a price increase of that much? And this is a hundred dollars. Yeah. Because that means that this is going to be 150. <laughs> that's, what, that's, what we're say, that's what we're saying is that 100 is a deal only because it's going to be more later. Yeah. But um, you I, know what? It, I, just one thing. Yeah, no. Real quick. Well, you still have to give me your rating, so you take it away. Well, the, the I just had the uh, like aftertaste on this. Yeah. I find it really weird. Like, not weird, but interesting. Because it reminds me of the. Uh, Midwinter's Act, what is it? The uh, Act Eight, Scene Three. So the one that I and me and you have. Okay, so the, the one F8. that we like really, really like. Yeah. It's got that same kind of body and like aftertaste to it, to me. I'm fortunate that I drank all of mine, <laughs> um, but I just, I just kind of. I kind of understand switch. what you're saying because. Does seem like there's um, 
Which might mean something it is has, finished. Well, that yes, that's that's how I felt. Um, it does feel like there is the body does seem like it's it almost has um, a similarity of a whiskey that has a wine finished or port mm-hmm. finished, what what have you, where it is more viscous and stuff. The flavor is not there, at least in my. What I, what I looked for, but the body, I, t- I do understand what you're saying with the body being similar to which of a finished whiskey. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. It's it's just similar. I mean, definitely not 100%. Same. Just kind of got that same kind of, uh, I guess it's not like a grape taste to it, but it's, you know, very sweet. Right. Kind of fruity, and it just kind of sits there on your tongue. I would love to know what barrels from what distilleries, what they were in here. Exactly. You want you, you want to know what's in it. I, I want to know totally want to know what's in it, and you're never gonna know. No. Never. So if you go on DixonDeadman.com, his website, like that's 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 all that the website is is contact Dixon Deadman. That's really? the that's the main page is get in contact with Dixon Deadman. So just just put your name, your email, your address, that's and funny. and then like a question or comments. Yeah, that's all you can do when you look up this whiskey. It's not released yet, so all you can do is sign up for the newsletter. Oh, you know? good point. Good point. Um, the Instagram has more information than the website. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I, yeah, so, uh, Carter, go ahead. What final thoughts on it and your rating? Um, great, great juice for the price. Cool bottle. Cool story. Behind I wouldn't it. say the, that's a very default bottle. Well, the label's cool. Okay. <laughs> the label's, label's cool. cool. The label's cool. Yep. That's more so what I meant. Yep. Cool bottle because I got it signed. Yep. I suppose. So there's that. I'll take it back. I'll take, um, take everything back. For a hundred bucks? Definitely would pay that again, most definitely. Uh, give it a seven point three. Okay. Dylan, final thoughts and rating. Um, yeah. So, final thoughts on 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 it for me. I would probably also agree around that seven and a half. It it is, I think, reasonable for the money. Um, I don't think it's for everyone. It's not for everyone as far as the price. Uh, but I think if you're the type of person that is always going out and buying the recent bookers or um elijah craig bottlings and stuff then i think this is something that you might want to try uh, and, and could be um interested in i am very excited to see the next releases whether or not we're going to see another one this year is to me it seems unlikely but if they're going to be releasing two a year mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i'm excited to see that excited to see single barrel picks because that, um, I just, Dixon Denman to me is, it's like one of those, um, like heroes in, in, in whiskey, in the mm. whiskey scene. Uh, and he sticks to the core principles. Yeah. Well, and something, cause he's not, he's, he's got a lot of, um, he's in a lot of podcasts, at least stuff that I listen to. And, you know, there's not a lot of, I feel like entities, uh, that have that, big of an influence in like the scene that have access to um, media such as that, or that are in media, not that no. they don't. Cause obviously they have the connection. They're just not spending the time really in that. So it's, it's cool to see and hear um, stories from them and him converse with people and kind of that interaction. So for me, that's kind of why I like, I really like this because no. it's cool. Uh, and then also the signing, but the like the whiskey seven and a half um, definitely would buy a second bottle. So that's kind of my thoughts towards it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, I agree. So continuing on. So I think what we'll do is I have two whiskeys that we have not tried before. They have been discussed on prior episodes. I don't know which, but something. Carter, you want to pull one of them out? No. Random. Random. One of them is a bourbon, and the other one is a rye. I don't know which one. Give me, give me, give me a hand. Uh, let's do the bourbon. Red. Tell me a hand. Right. You don't choose. I don't choose. Look at that. You got the bourbon. It's, it's a red. So, this is Starlight. Oh yes. A single barrel pick. Um. Do you want me to open it? From Oak and Thieves. Like- yep. Let's open this. Unopened bottle. I have not had these. I had just got them. Oh, plastic. Oh. Plastic. (laughs) 
Oh, wait. They can do the cork pop. And what are you waiting for? For the glasses. Give me some okay, gla- all right, oh. all right. <laughs> Give me some glasses. If the hammers are melting on my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Flavors are melting on my tongue. Ready? Nice. Nice. Going back to the other one real quick. For next future releases from Twice Oaked, or two, two times Oaked. Two times Oaked. Um, they, as good of a blender as Dixon Deadman is, like, you can't, it's not a, you can't mess up a single barrel, right? I mean, I mean, you can choose a bad one, but I mean, like, you get the taste test them. It is an excellent point. You kind of know, like, it's going to be good. Well, <laughs> so not necessarily, and this is, the, this is what I have to say. So he's double barreling, right? So he's buying barrels, blending them, and then putting in another barrel. I think that's what they mean by single barrel is the single barrel of the second one. So they, there's already been a blending okay. made okay. Um, and it's then rebarreled gotcha. into a new one. Okay. So I believe that is what that, meant. that refers to. Gotcha. Um, so in, it is a blend and, still. But that wouldn't go against, against single barrel rules, you know, like jurisdiction. I, I don't believe there's a law against that because technically it is being put into a new barrel. Sure. So it's not. Blended Cause, cause, cause it's, in, like, it's like single barrel finished in like. So this this is what I this is what I would say. Um, wine barrels um, vary on size, but typically are bigger than the traditional fifty three gallon whiskey barrel. If you are finishing a whiskey and you are going to have a single barreled whiskey that was finished in port, that port barrel is, I don't know what like. 70 gallons, something like that. I don't yeah, actually they're know. Big. They're, they're big. big. Um, you're putting at least one in a partial to two to three whiskey barrel sizes in there. So if you're coming away with a single barrel that's finished in a wine, there's already three whiskey barrels in there. We'll just right. say. Yep. So I think that's already kind of the standard in, in certain areas. So, and I don't believe there is a legal definition i think it's just single barrel because it is from one barrel it's id'd so we can say it's i you know it's a single yep. barrel yeah but, gotcha. but yeah that is a good point all right so it's starlight um carter can you actually read the specific label on this one on this bourbon for us oh my god uh you want the back or the front Ah, uh, the front okay i got some got some whiskey on the bottle This is a single barrel selected by Oak and Thieves. Okay. Uh, let's see. Starlight Distillery. It is a Carl T. Hubbard's limited release double oaked bourbon whiskey. Uh, bourbon whiskey finished in a second oak barrel. It was distilled on Hubbard's Farm small batch selected by Starlight Distilling for New York. Batch number. I'm going to sneeze. power through batch number 22-2087-2 we are looking at uh, 112 proof aged four and a half years american oak single barrel selection by oak and thieves so i guess the farm the farm itself is actually pretty old like Mm -hmm. it goes it goes back quite a ways um and i believe they got into wine and brandy distilling um, even before, but so they've been doing it for actually quite a while, at least making wine. Uh, and I always heard great things about Starlight. Never been able to pick one up until recently. This was, uh, um, this came, came up and I bought two, mm-hmm. um, one being the bourbon and one being a rye, which we'll get to. Uh, but Spoilers. yeah. <laughs> Spoilers. Yeah, I'm just getting pre- predominant oak from this because when you when you explain that it was finished in the second oak barrel, that's really all I, all I can think about. And so when I smell it, I'm like, yeah, it's it's it oak. smells like brown sugar. It smells like oak. oak. Yeah, I mean just wood. Like it just it just smells like wood. It just smells like wood. wood. All right, I can't I can't get too much more. I apologize for the sounds. I'm a little too far away from my mic. There you go. It's better. 
Mm. Mm. It's definitely mm-hmm. interesting in a good way. I love that. Oh. I love that. Ooh. That's so good. Finishes with a little bitterness. I'm a sucker for proof. <laughs> it was <laughs> nice. It like went up into my nose. Mm-hmm. It's not massively higher though. No. no. So this isn't did it say anything about being port anything? Nope, just port du- girls? It's just it's double, double oak. Double oak. Because yeah. it tastes very port like yep. to me. It must taste porty. And Oh, I guess because I said it. Yeah, because it is because you said it. Yeah. But <laughs> but the way it, it evaporates and dries on the tongue is just the same way the wine does. Yeah, it does not stick around. Oh man, it is very sweet, but also very hot. Um, I like that. I love it. This is my. This is good. I, I like them. I'm, this I'm this say, is say exactly right yeah. now. I like it more. Than this is that. exactly what I was the liking. Phoenix blend. You oh, like I it do more? Too. I, like, I do too. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I like this more. This was, I believe, sixty five dollars. Really? Wow. That again, it's because I'm a sucker for proof. That's why. Like, if you just make it hotter, <laughs> I like it more. <laughs> more flavor. I, no. I'm super happy because this holds exactly to what my expectations of what I had heard. Um, it's fantastic. Yep. Yeah, this doesn't smell nearly as good, Mm-mm. but it tastes a lot better. I'm gonna add a little bit of water. That's not the right water. It's over here. I don't. I don't need the water. I don't want to throw it at him. I don't want to. I'll help. hand it to him. Take Damn. the water, stupid. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where'd you find this at? Um, Internet. So remember the uh, podcast? Yes. They have a Patreon where they have a group called Oak and Thieves where mm-hmm. they select um, single barrels. Mm-hmm. And I saw it, or I listened to an episode of the, of the podcast, and they mentioned that they had a Starlight pick. So I signed up for the Patreon and purchased said bottles. Very nice. Internet. Patreon, man. Internet. Paying to pay. Internet. Pays off. Yeah, paying to pay. <laughs> Internet. <laughs> The right to buy. Mm. So add a little bit of water to this. Yeah, I love how how grainy it is at the beginning. It's so grainy and like it's straw. Nope. And then bad. does it ruin it? Mm, it complexity goes away. Yeah. And it becomes like a very typical bourbon. Yeah. Uh, can you hand me that bottle? I just wanted to see if there was any other. I like how round this bottle is. It's very it's a thick oh, it's, cylinder it's, instead of a thin cylinder. The starlight bottles are really cylinder. nice. It's nice. The labels are very nice on them. Um Yeah, 56%. Let's see. So a little bit more information. Um after a minimum of four ed- years aging a new charred American oak, this Carl T batch was transformed into an unused charred oak barrel to age an additional four to eight months. This process provided intense oak notes, enhanced vanilla flavor, and mellow rye spice. Family owned and farmed since 1843. So it's, it's very old. The farm. Mm. This is Indiana. This, this is an Indiana distillery that isn't MGP. Yeah, it's MGP adjacent. Uh, it's right yeah. Right next to them. Let's let's look at the addresses. Maybe let's see how close they actually are. They put their address. You know, they put their full address on there just no so like way. you know, mm-hmm. so we don't get confused with MGP or formerly known as MGP. Yeah. Come on. Tell us about that next bottle. I want to look at the next bottle because this one is the better one. Oh shoot! Okay. Oh, I got scared for a second. I thought that the label was like gone. <laughs> I got scared. Man, those cell phones. <laughs> okay. So here we got another double oaked whiskey. Right. We got another pick by Oak and Thieves. And we got another Starlight. Uh, it is the Old Rick House Hubbers double oaked rye whiskey. Rye whiskey finished in a second oak barrel. Uh, same stuff. It was a Starlight Distillery for New York. Uh, batch number 
2307-1. It's 109 proof. Aged four years in American oak. Um, This one's a little different. This one's got a fun label on it. Yeah, I think it's it's it can be pretty typical to do... You covered up the fun part. Well, because it was going to get covered no matter what. I didn't know where else to put the label. Over the other label. No. Um... So on some store picks, people make custom labels for it. And this is what we have here is they have a custom label that they made of the uh, the Black Pearl from Pirates of the Caribbean. And uh, that was kind of cool. You have to put it on yourself because I think there's legal reasons. But uh, I lost – I must have lost mine um, in the shipping because the other one for the bourbon didn't show up. Yeah, that's annoying. Ah, that's fine. All right, so yeah, Starlight – is that, I mean, it's basically Kentucky. It is like is it right on the border? It's Thirty minutes outside of Louisville. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that doesn't surprise me. And then MGP is actually based in Kentucky now. Didn't know that. What? They're they still have their their main their they call it their historic facility <laughs> is in Lawrence Lawrenceville sorry Lawrenceburg Indiana which is closer to Cincinnati. They're called Squid Squid now or Squib. They they changed the name because they either rebranded or purchased. Interesting. Um, we'll probably discuss that in a later. Yeah, but episode. yeah, so yeah, MGP is uh, they're definitely Midwest. I mean, you're in you're in between Indianapolis, Cincinnati, or Columbus, and Lexington, Kentucky. It's right in the triangle there. That is the heart of that eastern Midwest area. People don't really realize how big the Midwest is. Midwest I mean, it's is just so freaking gigantic. It's, it's very mid states. and west. It's like it's all of Europe. <laughs> like if you were to drive <laughs> across Europe, that's how far it is from like the left of West Virginia to like the left side of Nebraska. Like, yeah, uh, not quite. It's, it, Europe's a little bit longer than that. It's pretty close. It's basically it. Anyway, give us a cork pop. That was a good one. That was very good. I'm I'm excited for the ride. Um, Zach, you got a little bit of dribble in the bottom. Oh, I do. There. Oh, you gotta finish that off. Do yourself a favor. You know, if we could do a store pick, that would be like the climax. I feel like that we would have made it. <laughs> would have made it with our pockets full of cash. Single barrel of. Where we Evan Williams where would we keep that? Like we'd buy Down a bunch here. of buy a bunch of bottles. We'd make or would, we, or, would, like or a... would we like tap it so you could pour it like beer, <laughs> but it's whiskey. It keeps changing every mm-hmm. month, noticeably. We'd make Gabrielsons get like a, a distillery ID number so we can store barrels in the mm-hmm. basement. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get that DSP number from Minnesota. Okay, I got a DSP. Hey now. You're a rock star. Get, Get your, your game, game on. on. Go play. This rye. Hey. It doesn't smell like it doesn't smell it doesn't like smell hay like, to me. It doesn't smell like much. No, I think it, it smells, smells very rye. Yeah, very rye like. No oak sense to me. Which is lost, ironic. Lost for the every, double oak. Yeah, right. Ironic, but it lost all the oak that the, that the double oak had. Um what's that? It, it, you know, it smells like the high, like the High West Double Rye or what is a note that I, for some reason, cannot think of what the plant plant is. The back of this is pretty much the same thing. Yeah. Dandelion. The last one of the season. The last one of the season. Uh, I loved recording that episode. Dandelion. Eat the microphone. Zach has mm-hmm. to stop. It's just like, this is too big of a distraction. I can't continue. Who ate the microphone? You did. You did. <laughs> you did the last dandelion of the season. Oh, oh yeah. I did do that, didn't I? How could you not? I can't remember. That's part of the meme. Uh, is it a weed? Is it a flower? No. Is it, it a obvious. grain? There's a... I forgot what the note was. It's... I, I hear it referred to so much, but I don't remember what it's called. 
Pine. But, no. I mean, it is piney, but it's not what I was thinking of. It's uh, Lavender. No, no, no. I have yet to smell lavender in a whiskey. That'd be interesting. If they could make a whiskey smell like lavender, lavender. I might be able to get, like, a couple people to actually drink whiskey. Yeah. Well, it's funny because, like, anytime you buy a whiskey candle or something, it's like, whiskey candle with notes of lavender. Never found lavender, though. <laughs> in whiskey, yeah. Extracts of lavender. Extracts. Xlax. <laughs> yep. Sorry, I can't. I can't help you. I don't know what you want. I. Uh, I'm drinking it. Mm. It's got a pretty good aftertaste. Cinnamon toast, but totally flat. It's kind of flat. It is. What's proof on this one? It's one lower. Nine. 109. 109. That's still pretty hot, though. I was really hoping it would be more like, bah! No. Wait, we didn't rate the last one. The, uh... I give it a 7.8. 7.8? Yeah. Oh. On the cusp. Yeah. I I had to give it a 7.5, because it didn't smell that... It didn't smell really that good at all, but it tasted phenomenal, so... Yeah, 7.5. 7.2. Cool. Mm-hmm. It earned it. That yeah, was good. Earned those point twos. That was the bourbon. Yeah. So um, the, unfortunately, this is gonna be like a five and a half. For really, me. it's that low? Yeah. I don't think it's. I don't think it's better. But I'm I've not, just had a lot of ryes that are just like they give you that. What's the rye? That rye pepper pump pe- 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 sazerac. You're lying. No, I'm lying. <laughs> I'm lying. I'm lying. I'm lying. Sazerac. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this. This I could I could argue me. that Stellum has more flavor than this. Argue, do it, argue it. Are, do we need get a, loud? Do we need to pull a Stellum? I don't have a Stellum, right? So you don't even. You pull it out. I would with none of the back it up. Do you have a Do you have a High West Double Rye? Uh, no. The he only does. Rye, the only High West Rye does, that it's I it's mixed though in something else. The blend. It's called High West. Midwinters. Mid-winters. Mm-hmm. I have a midwinters. It's yeah, not, not blended not. into a midwinters, is it? No, I just I just assume that there's younger stuff that probably would have been a double mm-hmm. rye in there. Probably. Yeah. I just say double rye because I mean I could pop out the midwinters. Yeah, my, my my slight disliking of this one is the same reasons why I dislike the high west double rye. Which was? Is that it has none of the good rye flavors, which are pepper, which is this actually does have that good stocky, stocky as an S T A L K. It like the stock of a plant. Oh, it's so it kind of tastes greeny. I love, I, I love that actually. I think that's the best part about this. Is it tastes authentically grain-like. What but, would you? Sorry, that's okay. Oh. You want me to forget? Yeah, yeah no, you can. <laughs> no, I was allowing yeah, yeah, yeah. your your uh, interruption. Interruption. Yeah. Pardon the interruption. Um, and it, but it lacks. Yeah, the rye usually are peppery, spicy. And then also, I guess maybe we'll, this is what Carter was trying to say, but it they're supposed to have a really good body. They really ought to have a good body by design because they're by the, the spice itself adds sharpness at the beginning and a natural mellowness as it goes away. I guess that was more of this one. Not I don't get a whole lot of sharpness. The barrel, the, the it, second barrel, really took over. It, it, it takes away maybe it's that charcoal. It acts as like a charcoal filter like you'd see in a Tennessee whiskey. But, yeah, it loses a whole lot of its initial bite. And all you're left with is kind of the mellowness. I just like the ride of a rye because it's like, ooh, and then, it, you know. It's not, not always, though. It's not it's, always, it's, but it's just sometimes it's just fun. It's fun. You go, <laughs> Yeah. And the double rye does that, too. The double rye. And that's actually because, in, I think, in my opinion, the double rye doesn't do that because it's not hot. The proofing, no. right? Because that's 47, 46 48. Six or 45. I thought it was even less than that. Yeah. So it just, it doesn't Minimum have. 45. It doesn't have the alcohol to back it up. No. This one does have the alcohol to back it up, and it still falls short of the the pounding start. The pounding start. I would, I would like to try it. Compared to? If they make a non-double oak version of it. They do. I would like to try their non-double We might have to drive version. to like Wisconsin or. Illinois, where it's available. And the only time I've ever seen this was in Kentucky. I know. Um, 
this is the first time we've ever had a double oaked rye. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, which is super cool. I've never seen that before. But you can tell, which is, it's almost... This is almost a better example of what the introduction of the second barrel is doing because the rye is, you know, Zach's saying is very pronounced usually. Zesty. Um, more flavorful. Whereas this is subdued mm-hmm. in favor of the notes of the barrel, which is super interesting. I think it's and a it good is more, idea. It is very sweeter. Mm-hmm. It is sweeter than most rice. It is very yeah. sweet compared to a normal. Yeah, if that's rye. what they're trying to go for, good job. They did it right, or they mm-hmm. they they succeeded in that goal. Well, I think they're I trying to like, like they're trying to pan not pander, but they're trying to like please the bourbon side, but also like there's you know you got the rye people, and then there's like you know you're kind of trying to blend that together. These guys are experimenting. Oh yeah, the, and that that's a great part is it's like I check Instagram and. Every time I see uh, like somebody taking a picture and posting the starlight, it's a different one I've never even seen before. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, man, I wish I could have that port finished one. Man, I wish I could have like Cabernet finished one or mm-hmm. like the rum one or like what you know whatever the double oaked. There's so many interesting going ones. I've seen more interesting versions than I have of just like their standard rye. I don't even know if they have a standard rye or bourbon. <laughs> I've not seen it. That's how many versions I've seen of of Starlight, and super excited. Uh, I I really want to compare this to something. What do we have that isn't Midwinter's though? Because that is finished. Uh, in, Wild in Turkey One Hundred One, right? <sighs> right. Yeah, it's not the same. And also, uh, I just know that one's gross. I don't. I don't even want to try it because. Do you gonna... have Rendezvous? Let me check it. Actually, I feel like you might have Rendezvous. I might have a Rendezvous. I think Rendezvous would be a good one. Do you have a Dickle? A George I Dickel don't have guy. a George Dickel rye. I've been curious. We got the Dicks on Denman. The, the what? No, I'm just making oh, like the owl, the Kentucky owl rye. <laughs> no, no, it's not. I have it on me. Actually, mean, no. Uh, we have Sa- Russell's six year. Uh, that's not actually Sazerac. Never mind. <laughs> no, there is a Sazerac. Oh, there is. Russell's. There's a Russell's six year. To me, is this closer to High West though? Mm-hmm. I'd agree. Wait, so Carter's checking his phone right now. I like to think that he's like checking his stock. You know, like they have an inventory app. That or they like use flavor for... notes. I was expecting like flavor notes. Like I gotta go back and check my. Oh notes sure. Yeah. Around <laughs> and see if it so I, yeah. I have a peerless rye, but that's slow approved. That's cast strength too, isn't it? No, I didn't buy the cast strength one. Uh, they're all cast strength. What was it? I'm sure. I'm pretty sure if you read that, it says cast strength. Cast strength that. I, I'm leaning towards Rendezvous. I don't know what you guys are thinking. If he's got yeah. it, yeah. I got, I've got a Peerless. That's 114. That's cast strength. I know it's cast strength. <sighs> um, I mean, it's been a while since I've had Peerless, so I, I'd only say yes to yeah, try it just, just for the time. sake of trying it again, but not for the sake of comparing. I just, I just had it recently, and I really liked it. Yeah. Like, I really liked it. Like, I don't know if it's because of the Peerless or the Rendezvous, but I really liked it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good. Let's do the Peerless, son. I gotta swear you had a rendezvous for some reason. I might be upstairs. Do you want to rate this now or rate it after the peerless? Yes. Yeah. Maybe I we, say I, we rate it now. Yeah, so we're not influenced. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, like a. F- uh, cars at five and a half, and that's like it's it's. Uh, I shouldn't have said anything. It's influencing me because I'm like, I'm I'm it's, either, it's either five or five and a half. Man. But I'm like, is it really that bad? You know? Because five on my scale is still like For 65 fine. bucks, I don't, it's. Okay. I guess right. well, for, for what they're trying to do, mm-hmm. I'd give it a six. You know, I'm just glad it's not a cheap tasting rye. Like it, it doesn't make my head hurt like other <laughs> cheap tasting ryes do. Well, the other thing is that this was like sixty-five bucks too. Right, we're saying it's cheaper than I that a was lot more. Oh, I got this at wow, well, like it, a smoking deal. Yeah, it must have been. I got it at. Check the transactions. 40, check the records. I got it at forty-four. Because I remember the bourbon being like 50, 60 bucks, and that was like 
forty dollars less Under. than the rye. We had to start just sharpening the prices we pay on our. Bottles. No, I, 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 I that and put the dates on there. Uh-huh. I wanted to put that and like dates on there just so I knew. I know for sure I spent like sixty five bucks on this. That I think that was before tax. Jeez. Still, because I went. I would have bought another one to the liquor store, and I was like, "This is really, really cheap. Why are they selling it so cheap?" <clears throat> I think Peerless is one of those that's priced. It's it's priced high, and they have to lower it. But, um, yeah, I would say that I would say I would agree with that. But it's not. I I think and and it's because they're just not well known enough. That people aren't going to take the risk to spend a hundred dollars, hundred twenty dollars on uh, on a product that they don't know. Whereas Booker's is around that same range, and yeah, but everybody's like Jim Beam. Yeah, but you can still find Booker's here at least pretty regularly too. Yeah, I only found this one place that was somewhat reasonably priced. Yeah, yeah. In the past, I'm not a. I didn't like, from what I remember, I did not like the Peerless Bourbon. I thought it was super overrated. But I, I think I think I did agree for sixty bucks. It was good. Well, that's like, not that, what that you was, spent on it, was it? It was like fifty, sixty bucks. Yeah, mm-hmm. I thought you spent more than that. Because no, well, because well, you go to the store, it's ninety, like at least. Yeah, that's what you see it as. Um, and it's not it's not worth ninety. The bourbon not so, worth ninety. Yeah, so the rye, I'm trying to. I don't know if I have we had, had the rye before. You so you guys had it. We had it on the podcast where I blinded you between E. H. Taylor rye, uh, peerless. And the wild turkey, and then Will there it? was another. I think Willet. One of them, either the Willet or the wild turkey, was like a fourth that because somebody said something. And they're like, "All right, it's not it, but I'll have. Yeah, I'll let you try this it." This was in the room in the in the upstairs the, room. Yeah, uh, New Prague Parlor. New Prague Parlor. New Prague. Or Prague. Yeah. Rest in peace. Yeah, this isn't the same as... It's I, not hitting. So, that's why I was saying, like, the uh, Rendezvous, I thought it was a closer mm-hmm. profile. It does start sharper, though. Like, this has the more traditional rye flavor, but it's not as good. It's not hitting. It's not. The same. I don't know. I mean, it's... Okay. It's good. Where's the lineup? Yeah, compared to the... the that, that's kind of what I mean. Starlight. Yeah. I, I honestly would say this is either equal and or maybe personally now having tried it maybe a little bit under the starlight yeah and that's coming from a 65 dollar bottle to another 65 dollar bottle but this is also but that's not a 65 dollar i mean that's it is a 65 dollar bottle but, if we're doing it but it's hard to find at 65 okay yeah and i know i'm making the same argument i think uh that has been made for the elijah craig single barrel that i got <laughs> but if you can find it all day, yes. But I think the fact that you can't really find it for sixty five bucks, the peerless. No, I don't even. I'm. I'm not even and sure I, how I found it for that. And if I remember right, which I, I believe I'm correct in saying that you guys, when we did the blinding, you rated peerless, given it was probably a different release. Um, you that was last. Um, between E. H. Taylor Rye. Yep. Um, wild turkey and the Willet estate. Yeah, I think this this one probably is better. This is better than I remember, though. This is not one that I'd like to sit down and drink. To be like, if I were to end the night, no. have a nightcap, it'd be the other way. It'd be the starlight. It would be the starlight. Yeah, you know? I would say. And this one, I don't know when I would even drink this. Like for choice. This is a. I'd bring it to a party. To a party, and I'd be like, oh, I enjoy it. This is a good cocktail one. Because it's kind of one-dimensional, to be honest. Oh, I feel so bad using the cocktail, though. I know, but I that's too. what it's good for, to be frank. Because like, oh, this wow. is not that good as its own. I like it. You know, the sad thing is I kind, of, I kind of agree, but I'd never use it in a cocktail. I do find it very, like, bump. That's it. That's all I get. Not offensive as far as a rye? Not offensive as a rye. Higher proof. I mean, sure, higher proof. One, 111. But still. Yeah. What were you going to say? Oh, um, you can buy the Starlight stickers 
for the Jack Sparrow on their website. How much are they? Zero dollars. They're not going to ship it to you, though. They're free. Yeah, but you probably have to buy something. Well, you got to probably pay for shipping. Hmm. And nobody asked. They're also show, selling. Show him, show him the the starlight that has the logo on it, or the that's the secondary label. Gotcha. And this is the other label that they were supposed to send him with the bourbon, but I think it was lost. Oh, gotcha. Oh, you just said what? I mean, this so is, so does is it supposed to come with it as a promotional item? It's a free thing that the the group that did the pick would have made and done with the 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 bottle. Okay, and this was, but it was listed in like the Patreon. Yeah, it, yeah. it was a oh, free item for sure. Then you can just email them and say, "Hey, never came." They're totally obligated to send that to you. Most mm-hmm. Patreons will do that for you. Oh, people who most people that well, have it a didn't Patreon. show up in the Patreon. It showed up in the in the uh, distributor, the online distributor's website as a free additional item. Sure. Well, then that okay. Then well, then in that case, instead of being a reward. Then it's simply supposed to come with your order. So it was, a, it, it's, I incom- su- if, yeah, you just but. gotta send them an email and say, hey, there's something missing from my order. It's supposed to come with a sticker. They, they're obligated to give it to Where's you. Where's my sticker? Give me that sticker. Honestly, people, I mean, people, <laughs> I, I deal with people all the time now for work and Carter does too. People call for less. <laughs> oh, true. And so 100%. Oh, it true. is so much easier to just get an email and say, okay. And do what they want. Just at yeah, just do what they want. Um, also, they have a ton of weird stuff on here. On, Being on Starlight, Starlight's or... website. Well, it, or their distributor's website, which is Sealbox. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, that, is that, that where was, you bought that, it through? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so they have the the stuff you bought. Yep. Um, on here, they have a Bordeaux finished. Ooh. Uh, bourbon they have the um the rick how the rick house double oaked just normal normal double oaked which is 50 bucks what proof is that um, 106 this is 109 on ours can you see that mm-hmm. yeah it, it's it one, 109 it's 106 on on the regular one, okay. On the regular one, yeah, it's yeah. one hundred and six. No, no, I, the... no, I understand. I was just confirming gotcha. ours. Um, they also have a triple sec finished barrel. <laughs> no way. Yeah. What? Don't don't you have a Parker's Heritage? That is. That's orange curacao finished. Okay. No, it is. It's different, but it's. It's the same kind of kind principle, of where it's like a liqueur. It's weird. But there's a difference between triple sec and and. Uh... Well, triple sec is more like. Lemony. Mm. I would say it's more was lemony and limey. Because, I, I mean, orange curacao is orange. Yeah, but I thought there was a, a physical difference between those two as far as the how they're made. But anyways. Probably. They have a Lost Lantern 2022 single cask, oh. which it comes in a normal bottle, like a bottle that looks like I, I I think that's the Lost Lantern style. Yeah. Which I'm not exactly sure what it means. Lost Lost Lantern is like one of the first uh, American-based independent bottlers that are going around doing American-based distilleries like uh, Westland, um, Balcones, um, Starlight. So they're just going around the country and doing essentially single-barrel picks, highlighting those, rebottling it as... Heck was that? Rebottling as um, forgot about that. That's their doorbell, their brand, but then also saying we got this from Starlight. It'd be the same as like the Alexander Murray mm-hmm. um, bottle that we got. That was Scotch. Alexander Murray is a company selected a barrel, bought multiple, and then is releasing it as their own brand, but saying it's Bunahaben distilled in 1988 at mm-hmm. Castro. It's the same thing as that, just an American version. Yeah. So, I would say, regarding going back to ratings between the two, I never did give a rating for the pure for the uh, Starlight. So I've let it. it I've let the Peerless influence me. Uh, I would give the Starlight the five and a half, and then I would say Peerless is actually like four and a half. I think it's that much lesser. Really, which is a shame because 
it it's fine. It's just fine. I don't think it adds a whole lot of complexity to to what Rye can be that we've had before. With the better stuff, you got Midwinters, you got Kentucky Owl, which mm-hmm. tastes phenomenal, and they have so much going on, and this has none of that. So, sorry, Peerless, but for a good deal. So, Rye is expensive. Sixty-five bucks for Rye just is not that much. It just isn't. No. So, for yeah. the, in that sense, I guess yeah, I guess it's worth the value because you can't get a whole lot of great Ryes for that price. But, yep. Um. <sighs> I would give it. I'd, I'd I'd give it like a six six point two. I think it's it's a great whiskey. I love the oak forwardness of it. That I mean, I just love the for that for the rye. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> starlight. I was like, there's two rye. The six, yeah, no, I'd, I'd give that a six. We'll just say six for the starlight. Peerless is like a five and a half. Um. I like the notes that the oak is giving, of which it's like a chocolate, just dark notes, molasses. Mm-hmm. I love those. I, that is my favorite in bourbon, and that's why Elijah Craig 12 here, especially the C series, because it seems like the C series is mostly those notes most of the time. Yeah. Um, that's why I like. I don't like the fruitiness of things that when bourbon gives to like um, whatever, but that's my that's my jam. Uh, and then rye, I really like rye. So it's like, for me, really good, both of those. I do think it took away some of the complexity that I would like to see. Uh, but still real solid. Um, so that's what I would give it. Yeah, same sentiment. Yeah. I'd give it a six, and I'd give that a five. And a half. As far as Starlight, Starlight is a company, it's like a seven for me right now. Oh, I mean, yeah. I am super excited They're for cool. I'm hype stuff. on this. They're very cool. If I could... I like trying weird crap, I like trying weird stuff, especially when I, at least when it comes to like whiskey, drugs, drugs. I like drugs, <laughs> drugs. Nope. Angel drugs. dust, angel dust goes hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just like the Parker's heritage that we were talking about, Orange Curacao finished. Uh, I think it, that was a 2018 release. That too. was so weird. I don't know if Zach had that, but that was weird. I did not. Uh, not that I remember. I can give you a little bit. I technically don't have no, a... No. I don't need to have it. I'm just... I don't think it's like that impressive. No, I don't want to try something... No, it's impressive. It's impressive. It's okay. really impressive. Well, it's, imp- real. it's impressive in the sense it's such a Random, unexpected just weird profile. Yeah. Okay. Well, you said on the podcast, so I feel like I need to have it, but I think I we'll say No, we'll really save don't. it. I think for the podcast, we'll save it. Okay. Um, we still need to discuss what's going on for the next few video or episodes. Um, but yeah. Okay. As far as that goes, um, final thoughts on episode as a whole. Yeah. Uh, double, twice oaked, twi- one, what's that? Point? <laughs> I already forgot. Two times Two oaked. Two times Oh, Please change your brand. Listen. Whatever you're, what's the what's the company? Dixon can say whatever no, he wants, but it's not Dixon. It's the the marketing company I doing a bunch Dixon. of garbage. Well, the company is um, Progressive something. Progressive Home Insurance. Prestige. Prestige, Prestige Beverage Group. Beverage Groups. It's them. No, that's stop the company. It. That's the brand the, is two times over. Right, as I'm saying, yeah. but the Prestige Beverage Group definitely is the one that's pulling the strings behind the brand naming. And if Dixon, if it's all you, or if you had anything to say in this, I am. I hope that you tried vetoing this and it didn't work, because it's dumb. It's to, uh, just we're sorry about him, Dixon. <laughs> <laughs> Don't banish us. <laughs> you are really cool. Yeah. Um. But yeah, the juice, good juice, and thanks for being such a cool guy and easy to talk to. Cool. I didn't get to talk to you, but I know cool. I just know you are just by looking at you. I saw your picture on your website. You look like a phenomenal guy. His signature on the bottle and his signature is on the actual label. Yep. <laughs> it's kind of cool because it looks almost identical. Yeah. It's like one for one, yeah. Mm-hmm. Almost, yeah. And then Starlight, you guys are doing great stuff. Keep trying new things. They don't always work. They don't always taste amazing, but thank you for at least doing something. And if you hear this, send us a bottle of triple sec. Yep. Uh, finished yep and please. peerless 
just give up. Do better. Come on, guys. <laughs> you were, you. I can tell that they're overpricing their products because they're they need to. Otherwise, they'll go under. Um. Gosh. So stop. Just go under. Just stop. Quit while you're quit while you're behind. <laughs> I like them still though. For what? I just like their what bottle. Do you, what do you like about them? I think it's good. What's good? Their bottle. Some of the. <laughs> Some they the have juice. a heavy metal cap that okay. you can just like. Heavy metal. To Listen, sell. Here, here's how you get out of it: sell the patenting for your bottle and cap to a better distillery. Sell it to and... Buffalo Trace, and then they'll bottle this, the Blantons with this, mm-hmm. and then they'll yep. use the holy hand grenade for something else. Mm-hmm. All right. Carter, final thoughts. Um, two times oaked, top tier, big pog for two times oaked. <laughs> Um, okay, okay. Starlight, a lot better than I thought it was going to be, to be honest. Um, when I was in Kentucky and me and you were talking on the phone when I was looking at those, um, I was a little skeptical because you were like, Starlight's up and coming and they're supposed to be really good. And just what I saw didn't impress me mm. a whole lot. Um, they have thoroughly impressed me with their product. Uh, I can say that. Um, I'm sorry, Peerless, but that was. It was good. It was good. No, good. It, it was fine. It was fine. But yes, uh, underwhelming rye, I would say. Okay. It's pretty generic. Um, my final thoughts. Two times oak. Uh, I I am so happy that Dixon Deadman is back doing what he wants to do in control um, because I love the rise. Never really got a chance to try the bourbons until recently, but was blown away with the rise. Still to this day, best rye. Um, I've had batch four and then subsequently batch three. Um, so I'm super happy to have tried this gone to the event and acquired a signed bottle of the first release of this super cool it's definitely hyped for me uh so that might be influencing my thought but i do think it's just all around fantastic product and bourbon i can't wait to see the later editions uh starlight held to my expectation completely 100 percent um, I was more looking forward to like a, a sherry finished one because I've heard so many good things about those, but was not disappointed with these double oaks. These were top tier. Um, super happy with them. The bourbon is absolutely amazing, especially for $65. Um, the rye is great still. Mm-hmm you know it's still great it's just being compared to something that's better and uh peerless i i still like peerless just kind of had to be the punching bag on this episode a little bit <laughs> but you know what Some, sometimes it's like that mm-hmm. uh yeah so thank you for listening to this episode of the whiskey house pub house and we'll see you next time <laughs>